<laughs> now, with Bruno, uh, he actually wanted... I'm sorry, he was offered by WCW to do commentary the next year, and he just said, I don't want to do the travel. I'm happy to do an appearance like this. Yeah. And just because you mentioned before, Bruno was on commentary for quite a few years doing superstars and everything, and I say on commentary, it was Vince and Jesse, and then Bruno would say something for about 20 seconds at the end, and then it was the other two again. So it was, he was completely wasted. He was there for the Northeast crowd, I'm sure. But right, right. having said that, why did Bruno and Vince McMahon have such a bitter dispute for so long? What was the what was the main thing that was the issue between them? Steroids was was the number one issue. Uh, uh, the second issue was he just didn't like where wrestling had gone. Um, you know, and I, I think we you know we all have, suffer that malady, right? We we remember the industry, we remember it, and then it morphs into something else. Uh, you know, Bruno, I, I mentioned before, he, he never quite understood ECW. Uh, he, you know, he was always respectful to it, but he would say, yeah, but why, you know, you should be, if you're in the audience for three minutes, you should be counted out. And, you know, why this and why that? And if I, I realized no matter what I said, it was going to get him to see it. Uh, so I said, well, come on, Bruno, to be fair, you guys had a green a guy with a green tongue eating turnbuckles. And, and he uh, sort of chuckled and shrugged it off. Uh you know, the, the industry was, especially then, I mean, it's still, it's always in a state of flux and changing to something else. But wrestling had gone from black boots and black tights, smoke-filled rooms with a few lights above the ring, to massive arenas and stadiums, feather boa wearing, rock music entering. I, I mean, it was just like dark ages to technicolor. And, uh, and, and Bruno was a vestige of that old school, you know, and, and you know, perfect for that time. I don't know. I, 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 I'm certain Bruno would know how to get over today because Bruno really understood the nuances of our business. And if he were wrestling today, he would know how to manipulate that to his favor. Uh, but he, like all of us, we have that one foot in where we came from in the business and what we remembered and loved about the business and what we learned and then spewed out for the business after that. Uh, Bruno just couldn't make that connection and, and make that leap. The steroids was the biggest, and when he uh, announced, when he made the deal to finally go to the Hall of Fame, the deal was he got to announce it in Pittsburgh on local media the night before WWF released the information. And I was watching Channel 2 News, KDK News in Pittsburgh that night, and I see you know, this is how I learned that Bruno was going to the Hall of Fame. And they interviewed him briefly, and he said, you know, well, you know, the steroids, and he said, but David Shorby, that's all been taken care of. And, and I knew it was a lie. And so I called Bruno right up and I said, you know, Bruno, you know, heads up on this. And uh, I think, that, you know, that Bruno's not a dumb guy, an incredibly smart guy, especially to our business. I'm sure he knew in the back of his head, you know, what a guy looks like that's on steroids versus not. Uh, but I think he wanted to, and he certainly deserved to enjoy his acceptance into the Hall of Fame instead of posthumously, right? And I think that was, well, in my humble opinion, it was Bruno's way of putting that me a cop up. Yeah, yeah, I'm going in, but they assured me this. And uh, because when I talked to him, like Bruno would, you know, it was always a good long conversation and Bruno would ask questions. And typically if it, I would have thought when I mentioned that to him, he would have said, well, what makes you think that? What do you know that I don't? That, you know, he would dig into it and just not jump to conclusions. And he asked none of that in that conversation. So I backed right off and thought he knows what he's doing. And, uh, you know, and certainly, like I said, deserved to, 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 to uh, bask in, 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 the, in the, uh, the entertainment of being involved and accepted into the Hall of Fame because he certainly deserved to be there. Don Morocco, when I was doing the podcast with him, always said that another bone of contention between Bruno and Vince originally was when Bruno had the Pittsburgh Territory. And there were issues between those two over that. So I don't know if that's anything you and Bruno ever talked about. Yeah, uh, I, that was called International Wrestling. Uh, and it, it aired for a couple of weeks. Everybody knows, and you know my love and respect for Bruno. It was a, like you had mentioned about uh, Brickhouse Brown and like being a vestige of a bygone era. International Wrestling looked just like that. It looked like an old tape from late 1962. And, it, you know, and they production, they had the money for production and all of that. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I, and I'm sure Vince probably did step toes on that because you could see a lot of the guys that were involved in that 
were Bruno and Dominic's compatriots. And, you know, they probably wanted some of them for agents and, you know, other things to come in, plus to keep Pittsburgh under his wing. Because this is in the earliest years of, of uh, Vince taking over and preparing to build this juggernaut called WrestleMania and WWF, WWE.